Well, we're talking politics and taxes today. Buckle up your seatbelt because we could be in for a bumpy ride. Let's get to work. What's up, guys? I'm Kay Scholl. Welcome to another financial awareness video. To state the obvious, this is not a political channel. We are a personal finance channel. However, it is an election year and it's good to be aware of what's going on around us so that you can have a more knowledgeable experience going into November. Taxes play a very important role when it comes to people's personal financial planning. So that will be the sole focus of this video today. I don't want to sway your decision. In an effort to stay as neutral as possible, I'm simply going to be sharing an article written by a certified financial planner named Darla. This was posted on the CNBC Personal Finance website. Link in the description to below. The article is titled, Here's What a Biden Presidency Might Mean for Your Taxes. An overhaul of your tax planning could be around the corner if former Vice President Joe Biden wins the 2020 presidential election. The Democratic presidential contender teamed up with Senator Bernie Sanders, an independent from Vermont, and the two formed six task forces to release a 110-page policy document earlier this month. The plan gives Americans a sense of what they can expect if Biden wins the presidential race in November. Quote, use taxes as a tool to address extreme concentrations of income and wealth inequality, the task force wrote in their policy plan. Adding, quote, a guiding principle across our tax agenda is that the wealthiest Americans can shoulder more of the tax burden, including in particular by making investors pay the same tax rates as workers and bringing an end to expensive and unproductive tax loopholes. We'll go over some income and tax figures in a moment so that you have a better understanding of whether or not this applies to you. Democrats would need to retain the House, capture the Senate, and take the White House, a trifecta in order to see those plans to fruition, said Hank Gutman, who is counsel at Ivan's Phillips Barker in Washington, D.C. Quote, if you get a trifecta, rates are going to go up on individuals, Gutman said. Income tax rates will go up. If there isn't an elimination of the preferential treatment of capital gains, there will be a reduction of it targeted toward high-income individuals, he added. Gutman discussed what could be ahead in a Biden presidency during the American Institute of CPA's annual Engage conference on Monday, which was Monday, July 20th. Biden's tax proposals from earlier this year called for raising levies on taxpayers with incomes exceeding $400,000. To put this in perspective, as of 2019, in the United States, a family would have to earn $421,000 or more to be considered in the top 1%. In particular, he would do away with the current top ordinary income tax rate of 37%, raising it to 396 according to analysis from the Tax Policy Center. Taxpayers with earnings in excess of $400,000 would also be subject to the Social Security payroll tax, according to the analysis. Currently, wages up to $137,700 are subject to the Social Security tax, of which the employee's share is 6.2%. Rates on capital gains would also go up. To also share some additional perspective, if you weren't aware, Social Security taxes stop at $137,700. However, if you earn more than $137,700, you still have to pay federal income taxes and you have to pay taxes for Medicare. However, Social Security taxes are capped at $137,700. Rates on capital gains would also go up. Currently, the long-term capital gains tax rate is 20% for single households with more than $441,451 in taxable income, $496,601 for married filing jointly in 2020. Biden has proposed subjecting capital gains to the same rates as ordinary income for households earning more than $1 million. In this case, they would face a levy of 39.6%. As the article just said, they're currently taxed at long-term capital gains tax rates of 20%, and according to this plan, they'd bump it up to 39.6. Quote, he's thinking of taxes much more as a pay-for, a source of revenue to pay for spending initiatives, said Howard Gleckman, senior fellow at the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center. Quote, he has tax credits for this and tax credits for that, but they're relatively modest, end quote. So as the article clearly points out, 
former Vice President Joe Biden wants to tax higher earning individuals in order to pay for some of his initiatives. Changes to Wealth Transfer The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act roughly doubled the amount that you can transfer to others at your death or during your life as a gift, without being subject to 40% estate and gift tax. The so-called estate and gift tax exemption is $11.58 million per individual in 2020. What wealthy investors should watch out for is a change to a tax code provision known as the step-up in basis. This provision allows an individual to hold an asset for years, capture the appreciation over time, then bequeath it to an heir at death. The owner's original investment is the asset. The basis rises or steps up to the market value at death. The heir receives this stepped-up basis and can sell the asset with little to no capital gains tax. Biden has effectively proposed putting the kibosh on this tactic. Instead, the unrealized capital gains within the asset would be subject to tax at death according to the Tax Policy Center's analysis. In that manner, the heir gets hit with the tax upon transfer regardless of whether he or she sells the asset. As dramatic as these proposals may seem, wealthy investors are watching and waiting. Remember, Democrats still have to capture the White House and the Senate, as well as maintain their hold on the House for these proposals to move. One thing high net worth people are thinking about is how they can get assets out of their estate before the laws are overhauled. Quote, the game would be to transfer the appreciated assets to a trust or to the kids before the rules change. End quote. Gutman said, once you know the election results, you can start doing some serious thinking, he said. If there's a trifecta, do some contingent planning, but not necessarily execution. Question for you. Hypothetically speaking, if the government were to raise taxes, what do you think they should spend that extra tax revenue on? Leave a comment below and let me know. As a personal finance guy, I like the idea of paying off debt, or at least paying down some of our debt. I feel like we're throwing money away like it's going out of style. Trillion here trillion there. It's starting to feel a little high. If you want to learn more about tax credits and tax deductions, click this video right here. Otherwise, click that one right there instead. I appreciate your time. See you in the next one.